The views and opinions expressed on the following program may not necessarily reflect the views of the staff, management, or board of Hope Media Group and KSPJ. It's what's happening around us, in our town, suburb, city, in our community. It's Community Beat with Kim Kasi mckee on 89.3 KSBJ. Well, hello and welcome to Community Beat, where we're keeping you tuned in to the topics that are impacting our local communities and helping them thrive. I'm your host, Kim Kasi mckee and today we're raising awareness for an organization that helps families with one of the most basic needs, the needs for clothing. Our guest today is Melinda Stevenson, Executive Director for Clothed by Faith. Welcome, Melinda, and thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. For starters, tell us a little bit about how you became involved with Clothed by Faith. It was actually started in 2013. I got involved in 2016. I had been on staff at our church and left that position because my son was really struggling in kindergarten. Mm. And so when he started doing better, I started really praying about, Lord, what am I supposed to do next? Um, He just laid clothing ministry on my heart. Mm. And so I just had kind of put it to the side. And then I actually saw a friend, a picture of a friend of mine with the founder of Clothe by Faith, Abby Forey on Facebook. Mm. And so I so I thought, well, I guess maybe God's showing me something. So I checked out Clothed by Faith and then went over there and met with them. And Abby was so gracious. They gave me a tour and showed me, told me all about what they did. And she even said, you know, if you want to go on with your own ministry, I would be happy to tell you the things we did right, the things we did wrong and kind of coach you along. But we know that there's a huge need in Pasadena for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. During the tax day floods in 2016, they had a lot of requests at the Katy location from Pasadena and people just couldn't get there. Mm -hmm. So she offered for me to open a branch of Clothed by Faith in the Pasadena Deer Park area. So I went home and prayed about it and talked to some of my friends and and really did an in-depth check on just who was supporting Clothed by Faith and who was on the board and decided that that was the route that I wanted to take. So... In 2017, we opened the Deer Park branch of Clothed by Faith in my garage, and then we moved to a storage building. And then after Hurricane Harvey, the church that I um, attended, Deer Park First Baptist, asked us to to set up in the gym. And then after that was over, we were set up there for a couple of months. We moved upstairs and Mm -hmm. have occupied that space in the gym of Deer Park First Baptist since then. Wow. Your testimony is fascinating. Um, I hear you saying that you just you were open to God about what was your next chapter. What now that my child is, you know, up some age and clothing just kind of fell in your into your spirit. Well, you know, when I was a teenager, uh-huh. I loved going shopping. Uh-huh. I mean, my mom would drop me off at Almeda Mall and my friends and I would shop all day. I pretty much had the gallery and memorized. <laughs> and I even You were the, the map. <laughs> the really cool thing is that I went to I went to Texas A and M for a year, and I was going to double major in management and marketing. I wanted to run Dillard's, uh-huh. and then I had been a store manager for um, Brooks Fashions okay. and Learner, and then uh, I for close, Learner. Oh and, my goodness! <laughs> in close time, I actually opened a store in the um, uh, north side of town for close time, and so I mm. loved retail. I loved the customer service, and so I just. It was just, it's really neat to me how later in life, wow. God was able to use a passion that I had yes. um, for ministry. Wow. And then not only that, you acted upon it. And I think that's that's so inspirational. A lot of times a thought will come that we believe is from the Holy Spirit, you know, but to act on it and to go on Facebook. And then it's like when we make that step of faith, then other things begin to fall into place to, you know, who knew that they were already thinking about expanding and and you were that person to help with that. Yes, it's really neat to see um, how God has just, in a lot of things with Clothed by Faith, we've really grown over the last few years, um, but a lot of it has been um, connections of, and really just us saying yes to -hmm. meeting with somebody to serving a certain organization um, and it's and God has done the connecting um, one of our biggest partners is Houston ISD mm. and we really got involved with them partially through um, a small connection with a child protective services faith-based coordinator but then one of our um, 
social workers from the Bridge Over Troubled Waters, which is a domestic violence center in Pasadena. She moved to be a wraparound specialist in Houston ISD, and she was really the catalyst to get us involved in Houston ISD. Wow. And that's turned into us since 2019. We've served over 14,000 people in Houston ISD. Wow. And so just from those little connections, and there's a lot more that has happened just like that where um, – Somebody has found out about us from another organization or a friend or somebody. And we've just said, yeah, we'll meet with you and see what you do and and see how we can partner together. So since 2019, you've served more than 14,000? In Houston ISD. Wow. So since 2013, actually at the end of 2023, we've since, since we started, we've served 124,000 people. That is amazing. Yeah. Last year was our biggest year. We served uh, a little over 24,000. And it was just, it's just been amazing just to see the, how God's provided the resources, Mm -hmm. the partnerships, the volunteers. Um, It's just really been um, in the funding. So it's really been amazing just to see how that's working. And I'm, a lot of stuff has been happening. We've got a lot of opportunity. And so I'm just really excited. You're in the wave to right see. now. <laughs> I'm really excited just to see a little, a little overwhelmed, but just really excited to see where God's, what he's got planned. So yeah, you're just kind of hanging on tight, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. Melinda, for those who may not be familiar Tell us what is Clothed by Faith. The mission of Clothed by Faith is to demonstrate God's love through the provision of clothing to those in need. Mm. And so what we do is we take your gently used clothing donations and we turn around and give out a week's worth of clothing to children and adults in need across the greater Houston area. And we do that through a few community events throughout the year where the community can come and shop or get get coats and things like that. The majority of our requests, though, come through other agencies that we're working with. Um, and those can range from mental health, homelessness, domestic violence, mm. refugee resettlement, people coming out of prison or in the juvenile ju- in the justice system, um, human trafficking. Um, so there's a lot of different organizations around Houston, both um, faith based and and just secular organizations that are doing some doing a lot of work to make to help people and with different needs. Mm-hmm. And so we're able to come alongside them and partner with them to meet that need for clothing. So, for instance, um, the a, a foster care agency, you know, they're able to work with the foster placement, maybe some mental health things health you know health requirements that the kids need but those kids need clothing so we're able to provide clothing for that for those kids or Mm. it's a homeless organization and they're working on getting them housing getting them a job getting them all their document their ids and documentation and we're able to provide that clothing so they don't have to store clothes on site they can just use clothes by faith as a resource and a request when they need it and we also work with school districts the same way so a school district, a school counselor, a wraparound specialist, a social worker. All the, the school districts have different names mm-hmm. for these positions that are meeting non-academic needs. Right. And so we're able to partner with them to provide clothing for, number one, for kids and teens that are maybe they're missing school because they're out of dress code or they just don't have enough clothing. Maybe they've outgrown their clothing and they're wearing stuff that's too small sure. or that's too big. And mm-hmm. they're un- so they're sitting in class uncomfortable because their clothes don't fit right. They're, they don't look good. Yeah, they're, they're dirty. They're getting their self-confidence. They're either they may or may not be being bullied about it, but but we all know when we're not dressed right. And so mm-hmm. they're not focusing on their on learning. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, uncomfortable. And so we're able to provide that clothing so those kids can can attend school and be and have clothing to wear and be able to focus on what they need to. Mm. Um, but they also are able to check with the families and see what other needs there might be, and they can request clothing for the entire family. So it might just be a student they request for, but it might be the they may find out that dad's out of work and they can't afford, you know, they need some extra clothing, or maybe they've had a fire, or it's a foster care situation mm-hmm. or domestic violence. There's so many different reasons that they could need clothing. I mean, even one of the things that I've really learned is just the needs that people have and both parents may be working, but giving them some clothing Mm -hmm. helps them with their budget. 
They're in, they mm. don't have to spend money on clothes. They can spend it on other things that they need to, whether that's rent or a car payment or food. Um, they're able to do that because we're able to help that family with clothing. Mm. And so those the schools can request that way. And another thing that we do with our school districts is we have 19 different closets Wow. Throughout um, several school districts in the Houston area. Wow. We have, Close closets. Um, yeah. So we started our Closets for Schools program um, in 20, well, 2021. And um, we have closets at um, some schools that are for, like, for instance, there's a closet at Navarro Middle School in Houston ISD. Okay. And the other elementaries at in the Navarro feeder pat and the Austin feeder pattern are able to go to that closet and get school uniforms. We have another closet like that at Mission Milby, which is actually now part of Houston ISD Sunrise Centers. Mm. We have some other closets at schools that are just for that school. So, for instance, Attics Middle School okay. and Whidbey Elementary, um, they have uniforms just for them. And wow. then we have. Um, some and those are all uniform closets and then some of the school closets are regular clothing we have one in pasadena isd in the south belt area okay. at metter elementary and so it has size four through adult clothing so the parent coordinators in pasadena are able to go in there and get clothing for students from that that south belt area which is like doby high school yes um, all those those schools that feed into there can go utilize that closet so that's just another way to to meet that need quickly so that those kids aren't missing classroom time. Sure. Wow. What an amazing work you all are doing. If you're just tuning in, we're speaking with Melinda Stevenson. She's the executive director for Clothed by Faith, um, providing clothing to not just children, but to, in some cases, to the other members of the family as well. So Melinda, clothes many times are in many closets in abundance because we tend to um, sometimes push things aside until we can wear them again or all kinds of reasons um, that we have the extra. Um, but tell us, how can we best give you what's needed? You know, what if there are some items that you need more than others or the condition of those items, how to get them to you? Tell us a little bit about that process. So we take clothing donations at both of our branches okay. in Katy and Deer Park, uh, Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. And we also have donation boxes outside um, of the entrance for after hours donations. We have a couple of other donation locations. Um, we have one at First Baptist Friendswood. Okay. And we have one at Grace Presbyterian Church at Beltway 8 and Westheimer. Right. Um, so those are, those are our main donation box locations. Okay. Um, and so... But also we have um, we have churches sometimes that do donation drives for us, schools, businesses. So if you are a part of an organization or a church or a business that you think that, hey, I think we, we'd like to do a donation drive, we would love to partner with you on that. We have students that do clothing drives for us in their neighborhoods for volunteer hours. Mm. So there's just, there's a lot of ways for us to partner together. We have, um, if you do a big drive, we have a way to be able to come pick up the donations. We have a trailer, we have a van. Okay. And so we can work out something to do that. And so the clothing that we, that we accept, uh -huh. we'll, we'll take anything. Sure. So you can bring us any donations. Um, we are going to keep the clothing that's in good condition. Um, okay. We are very um, particular sure. about the quality of clothing that we keep. Mm -hmm. It needs to be in good condition, no stains, no holes, no tears. Right. It needs to be in style. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that um, that we're not giving somebody clothing that from the that is from 20s. thirty years ago and <laughs> sure. has big old giant shoulder pads <laughs> or um, you know it's you you can definitely tell <laughs> sure and so although some of that stuff is coming back in style but right. we we want to make sure that we're giving More people clothing that is that that they're no one's going to be able to tell that they got clothing from a, a charity sure and because our main goal. Um, besides just demonstrating God's love to people is that we're giving them hope and dignity. Mm. And we want, that's that's our main goal. And so so we will keep the clothing that's in good condition. We will, we actually recycle the clothing that is not in good condition. We have a recycling company that comes and picks that up from oh, us. that's awesome. And so we're able to, to um, they use it to do all sorts of things. And so we're able to um, use that. That's actually one of our, ways that we can earn a little bit of income is through that recycling and so that helps us so don't think that oh this has sustain it's got a tear on it they can't use it 
the best thing to do would be to put those cl- that type of clothing in a separate bag, market recycling, and that way our volunteers and staff don't have to sort through that. They Brilliant. can just automatically That's put it in the pile. That's a great idea. You can also add things like towels and sheets into that also, and we can... You put that in the recycling, so that just helps get those gets that weight up and gets mm-hmm. us a little bit more money to to purchase some of the other things that we need. Wow, that's great! I have had not heard of an organization that'll do that where you take everything, but you just you sort it accordingly, and and that's amazing. So someone's do, doing that sorting. So talk to us about what are some of the ways you rely on the community to uh, propel the mission forward. How are some ways people come alongside to help Clothed by Faith? So we rely heavily on our volunteer team. So we have a small staff at both branches because we are open Monday through Friday. Um, So we have to make sure that we can stay open. But the majority of our work is done by volunteers. And so those volunteers may come into the branch and actually volunteer in the branch. Um, They may be sorting donations. The majority of them, though, are actually shopping. So if you like to shop, this is a great place to come. They are um, they'll get a little tag with the they're going to shop for each individual person. And so those requests that come in from the agencies and the schools, we print them out. Mm. And so they're shopping for someone else. So they're shopping for someone else. And so that sheet has their name, their age, their gender, their shirt pant and shoe size and any preferences on there that they have and so they can tell us that it's a if it's a little girl maybe she loves unicorns her favorite color is purple um she's she's real petite or she really likes um or it's a little boy he really likes marvel characters um it, for an adult it might be they might tell us they have a job interview or they really just want casual clothing or a teenager they really want skinny jeans and they only wear the color black so we can you know they can put anything in there and so our volunteers are going to go through and shop through the inventory that we have hanging okay. uh, our branches are kind of set up like a store and so they'll shop through that inventory and pick out a week's worth of clothing so they're going to find about five bottoms mixed between shorts skirts jeans leggings um and they're going to get about seven to ten tops depending on the season match them up with those shorts and pants Um, the girls are going to get dresses the ladies will get dresses they'll get a jacket Um, and there's a couple other things that if we have them they put them in there sometimes we have pajamas Mm. Um, and then we try to give brand new underwear and socks to all of the kids so we try to make sure we at least have that in stock Mm -hmm. and if we have it we give it to the adults also and then the last thing they're going to get is a pair of shoes and all of that stuff is so the volunteers fold everything up package it in the bag and it kind of looks like a gift for the person so that's that's really what a lot of our volunteers do in our branches there's also things that you can take home we have laundry that volunteers take home and do um they will take home our donations of underwear and socks and repackage them into packages of five. Okay. And so they can, they'll write on the, they write on the, we give them Ziploc bags and Sharpies and scissors and they just take that home and package it all up and bring it back to us. And so there's a lot of different, wow. there's a lot of different opportunities to volunteer with us. What is, are there any particular age requirements for volunteers? Yes. So we, in our warehouse, we do require that if, Somebody has to at least be 14 years of age okay. and 14 and 15, they need to be, need to be accompanied by an adult and then 16 and up, they can volunteer on their own. And those, those students can earn volunteer hours for that. Also, we can sign off on any volunteer hours they need for school or other organizations. Is there a certain commitment of time uh, as far as duration for a volunteer that you process through? Do you ask them to stay for at least six months or a year or can they just do a one off so they can come in and volunteer typically for however long they want to so our volunteer shifts are 10 to 12 12 to 2 and 2 to 4 and someone can volunteer one day a week um, one day a month it just depends on what their what their schedule allows and they will just go on to our website and there's a tab that says get involved and they can register as a volunteer. And then our branch managers from either Katy or Deer Park, whichever location they choose to volunteer at, will contact them. And then we have a sign up genius link that you go in and 
and um, sign up on. And there's some, there's also some training videos to watch just so that you're a little bit familiarized with what we do in the branch and what it looks like before you get there. Mm, Amazing. That's awesome. So what you talked about, um, how God is just continuing to do great things uh, through Cold by Faith. What's on the horizon and how can we be praying for you, for your organization? We served over 24,000 people last year. That was 7,000 more than 2022. And so just that growth yes. is just exciting. We are, um, we've got a lot of opportunities. I went actually went yesterday and met with, um, met the Harris County Opportunity Center and wow. they've asked us to put a closet in there. So that's, that's going to be something they're kind of a school, um, but, but it's something extra um, additional to that. And we, um, there's just, there's several other school districts that have asked us for closets. And so that's one of our areas that we're kind of growing in. We've had yes. a lot of new, um, we had 24 new organizations this year that started partnering with us. And so 24 we've just, new. Wow. Mm-hmm. So there's, um, there's just, there's a lot of need right now with the economy and groceries and rent going up. Those, you know, those families that are living they're above the poverty line, but both parents are working and they still don't make enough money to um, to be able to provide for their families. Clothing is definitely a way that we, especially as the body of Christ, can really demonstrate what um, what Jesus told us to do. That's right. You know, to be able to, you know, clothe clothe people and take care of the poor and the those that are in need. And so there's just there's just a lot of opportunity. And so we're excited about what's happened, you know, d- just the different opportunities that we have. We are looking for new locations for our Deer Park branch. Mm. For one, we're upstairs. So, um, so picture a 1970s Baptist gym that's cinder block. That's where we are. <laughs> we're upstairs. There's no elevator. So our Deer Park branch really needs a one story space. Mm-hmm. And in that one story space, we would continue to have our regular operations where we've got the clothes hanging up like a store and our volunteers are filling those requests. We have a little bit bigger space for sorting donations because with the growth, we need more clothes. That's right. And so we need more space to sort those donations. And we also need more space for storage of inventory as we increase the closets. Mm. So the you know, our H, our Houston ISD schools are all uniforms. So that we pretty much purchase the uniforms and they go straight to the closets. Sure. But um, as we're looking at, like, for instance, the Opportunity Center or some of these other school districts that wear regular clothing, we need more space to, to store that inventory. Sure. So just there may be someone listening that has a warehouse or has something that they can make available. Who would they reach out to to? Make so, that connection. So they would reach out to me, okay. Melinda Stevenson. Um, my, they can contact me at the Deer Park branch of Clothed by Faith is the, probably the easiest. That's where I am most of the time. Okay. Um, and they can get you connected to me. But we are definitely, um, we'd like to have just that, that bigger space to be able to do a little bit more in Houston and to be able to expand. We've, um, in the future, I would love for us to have something on the north side of town, on the south side of town. So there's, because mm. one of those Two of those schools, districts that want closets are in Hitchcock and Texas City. So that's Galveston County. Right. And so so they already drive to Deer Park to pick up clothing. Wow. So we'd like to be able to get closer to them. We've been having a great time speaking with Melinda Stevenson. She's the executive director of an amazing ministry called Clothed by Faith. And we're excited about a wonderful opportunity to partner and raise even more awareness for Clothed by Faith at an upcoming Houston Rockets game. So KSBJ and Vita Unida will be partnering um, with the Rockets for Faith and Family Night uh, with with a special post-game concert with Danny Gokey, Evan Kraft. All of this is happening Sunday, January 21st at the Toyota Center. And um, Clothed by Faith will be in the arena. So um, just tell us how can people support you on site right there in the downtown area, Toyota Center. So the night of the game, we are going to have donation collection boxes at each entrance and we're asking people to bring brand new underwear brand new socks drop them in those donation boxes Um, we like I said before we 
try to put new underwear and socks in each of the bags that we give away. We also, because of this partnership with Danny Goki and his organization, um, Better Than I Found It, we are going to be adding another closet at Ecclesia Lindale. It's a church on the north side of town that really is a community center. They're actually not really even holding services there. They have a Head Start preschool there, Attack Poverty offices out of there and does GED and ESL classes. And so we've been partnering with them for a couple of years and we're going to be putting a clothing closet for that community Wonderful. up there. They, are, they also serve as a pickup location for our Sam Houston High School feeder pattern schools mm. um, that when those schools request from us, they're able to pick their donations up there, their request up at, at Ecclesia. So we're excited about that, about that closet and some of the underwear and socks that are collected the night of the game are going to go into that closet and then other ones will go into other closets. So we served 24,000 people last year. So multiply that times five yes. and that's how many pair of underwear we need. So <laughs> it's a lot of underwear. And so, and it, and it really makes, you'd be surprised how much of a difference new underwear and new socks makes to a person. Absolutely. Um, it really, it really does impact them. And it's, it's a need that we don't always think about, but it's definitely something that people are very grateful for and mm-hmm. that they need. And they're focusing on children, any school age child up mm-hmm. to 18 and what those sizes would be. And they'll collect sizes from 2T up to through adult sizes. Okay. Some of these some of these teenagers wear extra large and 2XL men sizes. Right. So and a, and the girls too are mm-hmm. in the 2XL and and extra large sizes. So any any underwear, kids, boys, girls, men's and women's is going to be able to be utilized for those those school age kids. Excellent. So tell folks, how can they keep up with Clothed by Faith? It is obvious you guys are so on the move. So how can they check in and and see what's going on with you? So you can definitely visit our website, which is clothedbyfaith.org. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Clothed by Faith and Clothed by Faith TX. So those are the best ways to keep track of what we're what we're doing. We we post um, needs donation needs on there so if you're ever wondering you know how can i help them when we're low on certain sizes we'll post that on there Mm. and we'll put um we definitely we showcase um our partners that are working with us out in the community and also organizations and schools and businesses that that partner with us to do the clothing drives or donate their time or um or financially we we kind of highlight all of that on there so that's the best way to kind of keep track of what's going on Wonderful. So, Melinda, is there a parting success story you could share with us? One in particular I can think of. There was a mom. This is through one of our Houston ISD partners. And she is a single mom. She had two kids and one of the little boys needed glasses, Mm. but he also needed some school clothes. And so the wraparound specialist reached out to us and got clothing, not just for him, but for the whole family. And so because of that, the mom was just in tears when she got everything. She said, I was just, I was just worried. How do I, how do I get him clothes? How do I get him glasses? And so now because Mm. you guys provided the clothing, I can afford to get the glasses. Mm. And so that's just one story that we have. Another story from one of our school partners. Um, We had a, a mom who had two kids of her own and her sister passed away. And so she had actually taken in her um, four nieces and nephews. And so we were Mm -hmm. able to get clothing for all of them. And, you know, I talked about how we package it and it's, it's very, it it looks very nice. It sure does. It looks like a gift. Firsthand. And so when the family received the clothing, they all sat around, it was in October. They all sat around and opened up their bags of clothing and they said it was like Christmas in October. And Mm -hmm. so the kids, um, even throughout the week, um, or throughout the next couple of months, as they would wear certain things to school, they would they go by the parent coordinator and say, "Look, Miss, look at my Aww. new. Sh- I've got my new shoes, or I've got my jacket, and look at this dress." And they, um, and that we get that a lot wow. with the kids. They're just so excited that they've gotten a new pair of shoes. About the clothing that they're able to wear, it just really. Um, and that's really what this does. It it boosts their confidence. It yes. gives them that feeling of of it gives them hope and gives them yes. dignity. And there, whether it's a child going to school or a 
a male, a, a, maybe a, a man or woman that's gotten a new job mm-hmm. and they're able to start that job with a week's worth of clothing to wear to work. They don't have to worry about their ne- their first paycheck buying something you know new to wear to work. They've already got that. that so they've kind of had a head start getting that started or a family that's um, lost everything in a fire or um, you know we've had women come in that there I had one particular woman she was she was just so happy to be able to come in and shop and pick out some clothes for herself she was in a domestic violence situation mm. and her um, her partner had gotten rid of all of her clothing wow. so she had nothing wow. and so she was able to come in and get everything that she needed and it just it just takes that that stress off of them and yes. just and and it and it allows us to be able to really make a difference with something that, like you said, we do have an abundance of. I mean, mm-hmm. I still have lots of clothes in my closet and I'm taking stuff all the time. Sure. And so, but we still, we just are, I'm blessed and able to get what I need. And so it's just, it's very, um, it's very rewarding for me to be able to know that we're making such a huge difference in the lives of children and adults all over the Houston area. And yes, you are making a big difference. I was thinking, as you were saying about them, the the name clothed by faith i said and they're being packaged by love and that's why people are able to feel the love of god through that and so we're excited again to uh, be able to partner with you all for the upcoming concert uh, faith and family night at the toyota center january 21st uh, with danny Goki and evan craft there will be collection bins there um, where you can bring those new um, underwear and socks uh, for school-aged children. And we know that it's just going to be a wonderful, wonderful night. And so um, we want to just say thank you, Melinda, for what you and your team are doing to make such a huge difference. I I can only imagine what the founder is feeling right now as, you know, from this seed that was planted and to see how this thing is mushrooming into something so huge and God has raised you up for such a time as this, <laughs> you know? And so God bless you guys for the ongoing work you're doing. Well, thank you so much for featuring us. We're excited about faith and family night and being able to partner with KSBJ. Awesome. KSBJ and Vita Unita. And so um, to find out more about clothed by faith, visit clothedbyfaith.org, or you can follow them on Facebook and on Instagram Uh, any of those areas that Melinda has mentioned. So again, thanks to our guest, Melinda Stevenson, Executive Director of Clothed by Faith. And thanks to all of you for tuning in today. And we hope you'll join us again next week for another edition of Community Beat. I'm Kim Cassie McKee on 89.3 KSBJ. Thanks for joining us for Community Beat with Kim Cassie McKee. Join us every Saturday morning at 530 on 89.3 KSBJ.